right, this is our last lesson on absolute values and inequalities at the same time. <laughs> and so on and so forth. And basically what we're trying to determine is how can we solve this? How do we graph it? How do I identify this? And this is something that I usually go over, like say, like in a college algebra class, per se, for instance. But you can do this in a first year algebra class, too. And what you do is you want to graph it, but the first thing in order to do it, or at least to do it better, is to identify if it's an and or an or problem. Now, actually, there's a very simple way to identify if something is an and or an or. This is a joke I usually use. And actually, some people sometimes laugh, which I'm is very surprised because most of the time nobody really likes my math jokes anyways, but I keep trying. If it's greater than or equal to, it's an or problem. That's after you, you, know, you know, divide and add and all you got left is your absolute value and something on the other side. And if it's less than or equal to, it's an and problem. With that said, let's try to figure this out very quickly and then we'll be done. And the way I tell my students to remember it is like, I use my English accent, I want some more, and the word more has or, and it's greater than, like more, you know, means like greater than. So the less than is and. And I remember I had a student who said, like, candy, and nobody really laughed, and I guess that joke was not as good as mine that day, which was really weird. It usually doesn't happen. But anyways, let me finish this problem. So I want to solve it, I want to graph it. Here's how you do it. You say that x is greater than or equal to 3. But since it's an absolute value, you also count for its opposite, too. So x is less than or equal to negative 3. That's all you do. For this one, x is less than or equal to 3, but then you account for its negative. And since you're multiplying a negative, technically, you have to flip the sign. x is greater than or equal to negative 3, which you did for both. This is an or problem. This is an and. And I'll prove it right now. An or problem, when you graph it, is like, I can have this one, or I can have this one. They extend in different directions. And the problem says, I want this and this. I want this and this. Which means it's cluttered together. So I'll make myself a number line. Here's zero. Here's three. Negative three. They're both closed circle because they have a line underneath it. If they didn't, it'd be an open circle. And it's greater than the three. and it's less than the negative. That's it. You graph in both directions. This one, when you go ahead and make yourself a number line, they're both closed circles because they have lines underneath it. If they didn't, they'd be open circles. And it's going to be less than the 3, but at the same time, and it's going to be greater than the 3. So your shading's right there. An or problem, the shading's on the opposite sides, and and problem is cluttered in. Last problem, and we are done with compound inequalities and absolute values, for right now at least. 3 times uh, absolute value 5x minus 6, subtract 8, is less than or equal to 13. We're not going to determine if it's an and or an or problem just yet. We have to get rid of the eight, negative 8 and the 3 before we can even make that determination. So we're going to add 8 both sides onto both sides. Now we're going to divide by 3. Absolute value of 5x minus 6 is less than or equal to 7. That is a and problem. So my shading should be cluttered in. So 5x minus 6 is less than or equal to 7. And 5x minus 6 is greater than or equal to negative 7. Go ahead and solve for both. x is less than or equal to 13, 5x is greater than or equal to 1, divide by 5 on both sides.
I'm going to move the answer all the way up here. X is greater than or equal to 13 fifths, which comes out to 2.6. And, excuse me, X is less than or equal to 2.6, I might have said greater, and X is greater than or equal to negative 1 divided by 5, which is negative 0 0.2. Make myself a number line. It's cluttered. It doesn't have to be a beautiful number line. They're both closed circles because there's a line underneath them. And the shading is cluttered because it is a hand problem. Now, I said this before, but I'll say it again. If you have an and type problem and the graph becomes an or, or if you have an OR type problem and the graph is an AND, it's contradictory. It's an arbitrary problem. It's a no set problem, actually. But we're not going to do that at this point. We're just going to use a basic introduction into solving the absolute value inequality uh, with compounds. That's pretty much it. Have a great day. Goodbye.